On the 29th of October 1918, the captured German freighter turned troopship HMAT Buna gained the distinction of being the last transport ship to leave Australia for the war when it departed Fremantle with 1,200 servicemen bound for the Middle East. The ship was still transiting the Indian Ocean when it received word via wireless that the armistice had been signed. The war was over, and Buna was now instructed to proceed to Durban, South Africa, take on coal, and then return home. While the Buna was taking on supplies, the Australian troops on board were forbidden from going ashore, but they didn't stop them from mingling with the local stevedores taking on the equipment. They would buy some souvenirs to take home. Sadly, that wasn't all they brought. Unfortunately, South Africa in 1918, like most of the world, was in the grips of the pneumonia influenza pandemic of 1918-1920, historically known as the Spanish flu. The close quarters of the overcrowded Buna on the return trip to Australia provided the perfect environment for the flu to spread. Five days after departing Durban, rough seas and cold weather ensured that the troops remained in close confinement and the first flu-like symptoms began to appear. By the time the ship arrived back in Fremantle on the 12th of December 1918, more than 300 cases of influenza had been reported on board, and one soldier had sadly died. The Australian government, already aware of the pandemic, had instructed the Australian Quarantine Service to monitor its spread, and they had instituted a maritime quarantine from October and opened quarantine stations in every state. Consequently, when the Boona arrived in Fremantle, the immigration authorities refused to allow any soldier to disembark. Now this posed a serious issue, as the Buna had no onboard medical facilities capable of managing the infection, and no way to isolate the infected to stop the spread. Eventually, the authorities relented and granted permission for the 300 unwell soldiers to be taken 8 miles by tug under distressing weather conditions to the Woodman Point Quarantine Station. Now to care for these ill soldiers, 20 nurses from another troop ship, the Raima, which was also in quarantine, volunteered to assist at the quarantine station and of these nurses, 15 would become infected and 4 would die. For those left on board of the Buna, conditions were deplorable. Authorities insisted on a 7-day incubation period with no new cases to prove that the disease had burnt itself out. Unfortunately, new infections continued and the camped, uh, close living conditions which proved ideal for the flu to spread. Public outrage grew against the immigration authorities' refusal to allow the soldiers ashore as casualties grew each day. Debate on what to do with the ship between the State Minister for Health and the Federal Immigration Authorities continued, and tensions increased to the point where the Return Services Association threatened to storm the ship to return the sick men to shore. After nine days on board, and despite breaking quarantine regulations, the ship was quote-unquote cleared, or more likely told to leave, and it sailed east on the 20th of December, presumably to defuse the situation. Another 17 cases were discovered between Albany and Adelaide, and the remaining men were disembarked on the Torrens Island Quarantine Station, a similar facility to the Woodman Point just north of Adelaide. No further deaths occurred, and after being given the all clear, the remaining men returned to their homes. <laughs>